I wanted to explain why I'm doing things the way I'm doing it. Um, it's going to be a round tent, so an octagon shaped deck would, is making sense, therefore. Um, it maybe looks quite complicated, but it is actually quite simple. Um, I've drawn the basics in SketchUp, basically the outer ring and then the center. Uh, you work from the center, so you make a very strong footer in the center and then you make eight footers uh, around and you make sure it's level. And what is most important to start off with to get these beams, that one, that one, and then the other six, and these ones the right measure. So that's what I calculated in SketchUp. And once you've got these in place, you've got the circle round and then the rest you build from there. And in terms of angles, it's quite straightforward. It's all of this angle, and this is 90 degrees minus 22.5, which is half of 45. You know, so it's like it's 90 degrees, 45 degrees, and 22.5. That's all the corners you're working with, and they're all the same. And for example, if this one or that one is not cut accurately, it doesn't matter so much because you just put them more inwards and outwards. You know, if it's too small, it's going to be more inwards, and it's not going to change the structure. It's still you're still able to put it in there tightly. And then these ones all are 90 degrees. Coming from the center, no, not coming from the center, it's just 90 degrees on, on these ones and against these ones. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. And the footers are made of stone because I have so much stone here on the property and they're heavy and they're flat, so they're, they're easy to build footers with. Um, if you don't have stone, you'll probably use concrete. Um, I put them a little bit more inwards because it makes the deck sort of visually floating. I think it's, it's quite nice, you know, when the grass is going to grow again and the plants are coming back, it's just going to see of green with a deck floating on top. I think it's quite nice. Um, the footers are, I mean, it, the whole deck stays in place, it, it's pretty heavy. So it stays in place just by gravity, but I'm just in case I'm going to put some stakes in the ground. I've been just sawing them, like right here and on three or four points, put them in the ground so it's also, it, it, it's, it's more secure. And then also the stairs, the base of the stairs, like the, the first step will be on four footers as well, which are attached into the ground. And then the front deck is then leaning on stones, so it's pretty secure in many ways. Now I'm going to start with the decking. So I'll start from the outside. There'll be a little bit of buff here, because from there it's easier to work inwards. Start from the outside and work inwards. It's going to be quite a bit of work because I have to shave off all the planks. 
see how that's going to go.
it's interesting. There was a lot of rain yesterday and I've nailed these sideboards on. You can see they are black around the tips and I first thought it was rust. But I don't think it's rust um, because you can see these chestnut boards here are black too. These ones and it's all black on the ground as well. Which is I think the, the how's it called, tanning, which is a lot in chestnut wood. Because these don't have it, this is pine, sylvester pine. And these nails are rusting a little bit, but it's not dripping this black stuff. So it's definitely not rust on these ones. So I kind of don't know what to do with right now, because the plan was to, kept, to keep them unpainted. You know, now they're freshly shaved, so they're very light, but they will turn darker over time, like a bit yellow, and then later they'll turn gray. Uh, and chestnut wood is very good in the rain, it performs very well. But it's, if it's leaving these black stains, I'm not very sure about it what to do. Maybe it goes off over time, but I have to look into that. bed is quite full now. There's basil, there's strawberries, there's cauliflower, broccoli, potatoes coming through. I might have planted things a bit too close to each other, like the lettuce. <laughs> uh, it's, it's probably going to be a bit overgrown, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see how it works. You know.
Ciao. Ciao. Okay, that was my third attempt. This is not bad. The underside is a little bit burned, but I think it's okay. It's quite hard to do it right in the frying or in the in the Dutch oven um, on the fire because it's so easy to burn the underside. The first time it was burned all over. I had it in there 20 minutes, but it was in the coals and, and coals on top. It was just too hot. And then the second day was a bit of a wet dough. So I, I waited too long, I had a lot of things to do, so the timing of the, the dough was not good either. And the underside was burned and the top was kind of like smoked chicken. It was a really rubbery, strange top and this one is, uh, that looks better. The underside is black. I can take that off. 